Valle at the center of the ring, and now here they go. It is expected to be a boxing match, not a war. And Saddam Ali Bernard was a member of the 2008 U.S. Olympic team, manages himself, chose unusually to begin his career by promoting his own fights. Your company, Golden Boy, picked him up about a year and a half ago, and since that time, two very big wins over Luis Carlos Abregu and Francisco Santana. What do you think is his potential? Oh, I think his potential is big. I think, in, you know, in, in his growth and development, he's shown every fight that he's grown, and he's, he's looking impressive from the last couple of fights that I've witnessed, you know, whether commentating or seeing him afar, he's been doing well. And you know what, he, had the, he has a good opponent. He had Vargas who's gonna be in front of him, and really not an opponent, a guy that's coming to win, just come off a tough fight with Bradley, and he's really gonna have to pull all the stops out on his fight. Max, is it a logical and fairly even matchup as you see it? Yeah, and I think the boxing world sees it that way too. As I said, Saddam Ali has a little kind of more fast, twitchy, star kind of quality. Um, but Vargas is experienced, and let's not forget, he was losing that fight to Tim Bradley, the only official loss on his record. He's had some close fights, but did have Bradley hurt at the end of that fight, as you just saw, and was robbed of an opportunity, at least, to follow up on it by the mistake of, uh, that Pat Russell made stopping the fight of, uh, seconds too early. Meanwhile, about 20, 30 seconds ago, you saw a couple of very sharp combinations from Saddam Ali in the center of the ring, who seems to have gotten a little bit of the energy jump on Vargas in the early going. Well, he did, but you know, Vargas is coming off, like, like Max said earlier, with the Bradley fight, and I think he's, right now with the mentality and the way he's focused is, is learning learn from that and don't want to be in that situation again so i believe he's going to try to start off fast just do a straight right hand but he should throw left behind it and and not pin himself position and look for one punch at a time well one criticism of vargas has been that he's a basic one two fighter who does not mix in the left hook the third punch in the combination often enough he's promised us frequently in the past, I'm gonna get there, I'm going to be throwing that left hook with damaging intentions, but uh, we, we still wait to see when the three punch, four punch combination becomes a part of Jesse Vargas's game. I bring up the end of the Bradley fight because part of the thought here, if you like Saddam Ali, and I think maybe a slight majority do in this fight, it's because he's shown that kind of pop that kind of surprising or sudden power that Vargas hasn't shown, but Vargas is coming off a fight where he hurt a sturdy chinned champion with a shot at the end of the fight, so maybe especially a motivated Vargas hits a little harder than giving credit for. On the undercard of Bernard Hopkins versus Sergey Kovalev in November of 2014 in Atlantic City. Uh, Saddam Ali was an underdog against Luis Carlos Abregu and wound up completely dominating the fight, knocking Abregu down twice one. and getting a huge win. Nice and relaxed. Relax. Take it easy. Believe. All right, listen. Everything we spoke about, he's doing. Everything. The only thing I don't want you to do is feign out and not fire. Okay, you faint and then you stop. Give me, give me so he touched you with a little something here and there. Keep your jab moving up and down. Good. Just keep circling. All right? Okay. How you feel? Good. All Good. right, we had 10% today. Next round is 15. A little up and down. Vargas here went for the fake, and then he almost got counter, and did get counter with the right hand because he went for the fake by Saddam Ali. So good strategy, but Saddam Ali had to throw the left hand behind it. And that's a little bit of what trainer Andre Rozier was talking to Saddam Ali about in the corner. Rozier has been Ali's trainer all the way throughout his career. He refers to him as one of my babies, one of the people I have nurtured to become a fighter. They have a very close bond. Once again, just to repeat the point, Jesse Vargas fighting with his fourth trainer in five fights tonight. Once again, a new trainer, and his name is Dewey Cooper. Saddam Ali either slipped on the canvas or was hurt stop, stop, by that stop, left stop. hook to the body. He was hit with the hook, it moved him back, and then he slipped. He wasn't hurt by the punch, I don't think. It was an awkward punch that Vargas threw, but you know, sort of caught Saddam Ali off balance. But, but you know, I like to see Vargas a little bit more mobile, a little bit more combinations coming from him. But right now, he's throwing one punch at a time. He's waiting to see a reaction from Saddam. One thing you pointed out, Max, coming into the fight, and uh, indeed a lot of people in boxing saw it as a close fight, difficult to pick. And you pointed out that Saddam Ali, who fights with 
neighborhood sparring partners in effect in Brooklyn while training for fights may not get the same quality kind of look in the gym that Jesse Vargas does preparing in Las Vegas. Well, yeah, Saddam Ali was the, along with Danny Jacobs, the dominant Golden Gloves fighter in New York of his era several years ago. But in recent years, the kind of the East Coast scene, especially in New York City, has not quite matched up uh, in terms of the competitiveness uh, as the West Coast scene, and that includes Las Vegas, obviously. So Vargas is the one who thrives, or may thrive, as it were, from uh, being in the Vegas gyms, and of course, those who know him know that he began his career as a protege of the Mayweathers, was trained for a long time by Roger Mayweather, and obviously at that point he was seeing outstanding opposition. Well, the, the, the whole boxing world has to travel through Vegas at one point or another, so you'll see everybody. You know, Saddam Ali has bounce and he has a little quick flair with his punches, and Vargas is sort of flat-footed, so he's sort of got to get up off his get up on his toes before he throw a punch and that's what I think Saddam Ali is looking at and make those moves and always be a step ahead of Vargas. Does that mean Saddam is automatically quicker because of the way he fights? Well it doesn't mean he's quicker just getting off faster but I think you know, Vargas needs to go ahead and be more and more mobile not only mobile but also throw his hands more than one to two times like now he threw three punch combination if he continue to do that then Saddam Ali got a, got a, got a set and figure out how to get his punches in. Marcus did land another left hook to the body there. He's landed a couple of effective left hooks to the body here in the second round as he tries, as we mentioned, to achieve greater variety in his offensive output. It's not a lot of body punches for me, the guy in this, fu this fight, and I like to see Saddam Ali and Vargas start going to the body and maybe something open up then. Ten seconds. <laughs> Yeah, Saddam Ali seems to think he can sharp shoot with that right hand from the distance. Stop, stop, stop. Good fight. As they complete the second round, both guys landing some significant leather in round two. All right. I'm gonna need more time to go, man. I want you to be a little bit more relaxed, okay? Nice and relaxed. Touch him with the jab. Don't let him set before you fire. Okay? Okay, let me up, then come after me. All right. No, you, we don't want to you on that me. He needs me, not you, brother. Oh. Let's keep it rhythm. Let's keep the rhythm popping. Up and down Kenny, with it, okay? Up and down with it, baby. Don't wait for him. I like the body work. Stay fucking focused, though, okay? Nice and short. Nice and short. Keep the jab working. Quit fighting this rhythm. You must control the rhythm. You heard Dewey Cooper, who was himself a kickboxing champion. Saying to Jesse Vargas, I like the body work. You mentioned a couple of left hooks that he landed in that round, but overall, as you saw from the copy box graphic, uh, it is Saddam Ali who has a slight edge in the number of power punches landed so far in the fight. Round three of the scheduled 12. And after three rounds, as we go into the fourth, we'll talk for the first time with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman, see how he's scoring the fight to that point. Stewie Cooper told us, that's Vargas's trainer, told us that Saddam Ali is a swag boxer. Swag boxer. He tries to get you to come in too hard and then he jumps in with a left hook. Well, earlier here, about 15 seconds ago, he landed an excellent straight right hand through the middle of Jesse Vargas's guard. Vargas just returned the favor with a left hand. Yeah, and, and, but you know, one thing I haven't seen from Saddam Ali is a, a combination after that. I mean, he's making one good shot and he's making it count, but to get more of more out of that, you gotta throw a right hand behind that left hook he just threw down. I mean, he get one punch in, but he never follow up with another punch. And you know what, you gotta get more when you go to the bank. You don't take a dollar, I'll take $10 out and he has to throw more than one punch. Yeah, I think what Saddam Ali has to show in a fight like this against a fighter of Vargas's caliber, he's a flashy fighter, he's fleet of foot, fast hands, got some pop. Can he control his opponent? Um, when Vargas decides to get more offensive, can, can Saddam Ali kind of make Vargas keep his hands at home? Can he discipline him? Can he keep him in the middle of the ring when he wants to? Well, that's that's you know, that's the test as time go on and fights and quality fights. And this is the one. That's, this the fight here is to start with Vargas because he 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 can do it, but he has to do it and he won't do it right now. He has to do it, Max, because. If he's going to calm this fight down, Vargas is going to continue to come, and he has to do shots that go, punches that's going to make him think before he come in and throw punches. That is Vargas. Uh, Saddam Ali would 
little mouse on his right eye now. Maybe from that left hook that Vargas landed earlier in the round. That's always the question with fast boxers is can they control the fight, the tempo of the fight, and Jim, as you would say, the geometry of the fight and keep their opponent where they want them. No, so Saddam Ali is throwing straight right hands and he's making contact. I, I want to see him go with that left hand down the body. And, and Vargas need to go ahead and put more pressure on Saddam because Saddam seems to wants to fight from a distance than close. Bunch has landed so far. Saddam Ali, 35. Jesse Vargas, 31. On paper, you would say, okay, pretty even fight. Is either fighter landing more effective punches to this point? I think Saddam Ali is laying more effective punches you know, at the end, but I think he needs to be more consistent with all his punches as round goes on. Stop, stop, get on, break, jump, step back, step back. Go. Done. Three rounds complete. March 16, the return of my show, The Fight Game. Join me, Bernard Hopkins, Max Kellerman, and newcomer Melissa Stark as we tackle the biggest stories and issues in the sport of boxing. March 26, one of the sport's top pound-for-pound -pound performers, Andre Ward, on a collision course with Sergey Kovalev, puts his skills to the test against undefeated former Cuban amateur standout Sullivan Barrera. Jesse, let me tell you. When they grab you, like you I told you about the, the, the knee. Okay, remember that. He start to grab it, hold it, hold it. Okay. Hold hold I need you to be a little more right. tenacious. A little more tenacious. Okay. Pick your punch output up. Okay. You're doing some okay body work. I need a little more. Change the rhythm of your jabs, okay? okay. Do not let him stifle you with that rhythm, okay? Let's go. Let's go. Cut the And you saw the cap with all the pins in it. Jesse Vargas has a true legend of boxing in his corner, cut man Rafael Garcia, who has been in boxing, if I have the numbers right, just about 70 years at this point. The best in the business. Harold, how do you have it through three? Look at you. I got it two rounds to one, 29, 28, Saddam Ali. I thought he won the first round, then the third round. He landed some nice right hands, just like he did there. Jesse Vargas really started throwing a lot more punches in the second round, but Ali seemed to take it over the third. Jim, I gotta tell you, the judges in this fight are relatively new. I don't know if we're gonna have any problems, but you know, you never know. It's, when you got new judges, it could happen. And you're referring to Carlos Ortiz and Paul Wallace, right? Yeah, definitely. Don Trella from the Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut is a very experienced good judge. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier. And Dewey Cooper in the corner told Jesse Vargas, be more tenacious. I want to see more punches, right? Really get up on him. And Saddam Ali, while he's landing good counters, Bernard, is not able to tame Vargas when he does this. It was good exchange from both fighters. And, you know, at the end, I think that Vargas got the better, better out of those exchanges. And, you know, and Saddam Ali must keep Vargas uh, at bay as far as in the middle and, and not try to get on the ropes and too comfortable because if he do, then Vargas will have a better shot at, at, at winning the rounds. Well, one good thing for Vargas is that he did something different. A criticism of him in the past is that he's such a pattern fighter and does the same thing so frequently over and over and over that it becomes easy for opponents to predict and time him. If he changes his game up from round to round and does something different, that may pose an interesting new thought process for Saddam Ali. And that's why Saddam Ali has to be the opposite of what he thinks with Vargas think he should do or try to get him to do and that's why Saddam has to be first he has to be first often and he has to throw more than one punch and keep Vargas in the center of the ring but in this round Max Vargas has been first as was the case with Santana Saddam Ali starts early shows you he has the superior skill set and talent of, but he's not able to keep the fight the way he wants it. Superior boxers are able to tame their opponents and keep it the kind of fight they want. And like against Santana, it looks as though Saddam Ali is going to have to show his fighting heart, which he's shown he has. But, he but he's going to have to resort to it me, already to win this fight. But he's showing me, Max, Saddam Ali showed me that he, he waits to see what he has in front of him for a couple of rounds, which could be good or bad. I think it's good. And then he figures the guy out, and then he waits. It may seems that he's waiting or he's not executing what he's supposed to be doing earlier, but I think he lays traps for guys to come that's, in. That's fine, but he is getting tagged with real shots while that is happening in this round. He got hit with some real hard shots this round. And for the first time in the fight, it is Vargas who has a significant edge in the number of punches landed in this round. The reference to Santana, 
Francisco Santana, a very good, tough opponent against whom Saddam Ali got a decision win on the undercard of Vladimir Klitschko Bryant Jennings last April in Madison Square Garden. And wow, is this fight heating up. Great fight. Tremendous fourth round between Saddam Ali and Jesse Vargas. And it became a tremendous round because Vargas showed up suddenly in the fight with way more aggression. There's Luis Ortiz, 36-year-old former Cuban amateur star, warming up in the dressing room, trying to keep up a string of sensational knockouts, which have made him one of the hottest heavyweights in the world. And here's what Ortiz has been doing in recent fights, as you can see, landing half again the division average of power punches in each round, throwing six more than the division average power punches in each round, and connecting at a 48% clip. And we've told you many times, 50% of your power punches is a benchmark. If you have that, most likely you're gonna win the fight. Danny Milano is the cut man over in Ali's corner. We haven't seen blood so far, but if the fight keeps up the way it was in the last round, cut men could conceivably become a factor. I said great fight. I should have said great round. That was a tremendous exchange at the end of the round, and this is turning into a really good fight. Saddam Ali, while unable to keep the fight, the kind of fight exactly that he wants, ha does show consistently that he has a real fighting heart. Interesting that Harold Letterman, our unofficial ringside scorer, gave that round to Saddam Ali, given that CompuBox saw Vargas as the more prolific puncher in the round, and clearly he was the aggressor at the beginning. So Harold must have thought that Saddam Ali landed effective counters, which took advantage of Vargas's aggression. Particularly toward the end of the round, uh, Saddam Ali landed some big shots. And both fighters, when they exchange it, Saddam Ali and Vargas have an opportunity to make each other pay. And whoever gets there first will be successful and maybe win the fight or win the round also. We mentioned that Saddam Ali was a member of the 2008 American Olympic team. Jesse Vargas, who is of Mexican parentage, though born in Los Angeles, was eligible, eligible to try for the Mexican Olympic team. He did so, but did not make the team. He himself says, hey, they didn't know me very well down there. The coaches didn't know me. I wasn't the person they wanted representing Mexico at the Olympics. You know, Saddam Ali, Max, has really a good right hook. And I've only seen him throw it maybe twice or three times in this whole fight. And that goes, you know, that right hook goes around that left hand of Vargas, and, and they can set up other opportunities with the left hand. Also, Vargas said that he was going to make Saddam Ali quit. Uh, and Saddam Ali's camp took exception to that, obviously. And I, I think that's part of the reason that when Vargas lands those big shots, Saddam Ali wants to come right back and maybe it becomes a, a kind of more of a dog fight than Saddam Ali would ideally like. And a logical reason for Saddam Ali to have been miffed about Vargas claiming that he would make him quit is that Vargas's last 11 fights have ended in decisions, 10 of which were victorious decisions. One was the loss to Tim Bradley. But when you have 11 decisions in a row, nobody's quitting. Saddam, you know, they exchanged some big shots, and Saddam Ali went staggering back into the corner. And while it looked like a slip, his eyes were blinking as though he was hurt by something. They got tangled. You know, Vargas and Saddam feet got tangled, but he got it glazed with a shot. But I, I think right now, this is in the middle of where, you know, five rounds, 12, you know, round fight. One of these guys, Vargas or Saddam, has to be able to say, okay, I'm going to take over now. This is the championship rounds coming up in the next half of the fight, and this is where now i got to show my, my dominance. So far, a good, crisp fight between would-be title contenders. And once again, give and take. As Saddam Ali momentarily drives Vargas into the corner, and Vargas drives him back with a left hook. Excellent fight through five rounds. All right, nice and relaxed. Sit down. I need you to use that jab up and down. It's going to come down to guts. It's going to come down to who wants this the most, OK? When he's not doing anything, he's trying to recover. You must keep this pressure on him, OK? We got we to make this a dog fight now. Okay. Hands in position, good head. Wait for Don't wind the left hook up. You know where I want the left hook to come from, right? I want the left hook to be shorter and then bring it up the middle. All right, All right let's Keep stay focused. Right, this, kid is, this kid is taking anything you give him. Don't give him anything and he won't have anything. All right. 
So Dom Ali threw a right hook just now, but he missed. And that's the off balance of it because now he's too close and he's off Stay balance back. and he Stay falls back. back. Not a knockdown. Well, even if you were to say that the ropes held him up, he wasn't there because of a punch. He was there because he lost his balance. That's right. Yeah, and a little push between both of the fighters, like they bumped each other's body. But, you know, he tried to throw that, that right hook, you know, that right hook over Vargas's, uh, under, well, over Vargas's left jab. And if he continued to do that after a jab, he has to set it up. And he has to set up with the left jab and then sneak it in there when Vargas is think that he's uh, coming in or going backwards. We reach the sixth of a schedule 12. If you've just joined us, it is Saddam Ali of Brooklyn, New York, in the white trunks with blue and red trim, and Jesse Vargas of Las Vegas, Nevada, in the orange trunks with yellow trim. A good hard right hand over the top by Vargas. When he leads with the right hand, Saddam Ali doesn't expect that because the scouting report on Vargas is that he's a one-two fighter. You're looking for the jab and then the right cross. And, and it, that's a matter of who's going first. When Saddam Ali um, is unable to control Vargas, to tame him, to keep him on the end of his punches and where he wants him, Vargas is first, and Saddam Ali is forced to react. Yeah, but Vargas is first, but one thing Saddam Ali does well, when he throw punches, his head doesn't stay. He doesn't stay right there straight up to get countered, and that's why he avoided that right hand that Vargas threw. And sometimes he'll move his head offline to the left as he's throwing the right hand. Because, you know, you taught that from the amateurs and you taught that early in the pros. I mean, you don't take a picture when you throw a punch. You don't take a picture by throwing a punch and then look and see if it hits the guy. And he moved out of the way whether the punch hit, him, hit Vargas or not. I think that's the instructions in Vargas's corner to make it a dog fight to to, to to get more aggressive is a recognition that Vargas needs to dictate the tempo like that and when he does he has success hard right hand by Vargas over the top now lands the jab again and lands the jab again Jesse Vargas getting more accurate now as the rounds progress Vargas is punching and determining how and when the exchanges take place. Saddam Ali has to use his attributes, and his attributes are throwing combinations, having flashes, and, and, and actually looking pretty, but being effective with his punch, punching power, and also his speed. And, and you know what? Speed is power. And so he need to let those hands go to make Vargas think more before he throw a punch. Which is why in Saddam Ali's corner, they want the jab, they want the jab to offset Vargas's rhythm and to dictate the pace. Just like that, you see Saddam Ali threw a full five punch combination and ended with the body and got some results. Ten seconds, stop on the bell. Vargas smiles as he lands a shot. And we're halfway through. March 26, tune in to Legacy on the Line for Bradley to Pacquiao, an inside look into the history of this great rivalry as their third meeting looms. And April 9, live on HBO pay-per-view, Manny Pacquiao, and I read this with some trepidation, in possibly the last bout of his extraordinary career, which means that it's also possibly not the last bout of his extraordinary career, takes on Tim Bradley in their highly anticipated rubber match. They split their first two meetings officially and look to settle the score in this upcoming showdown. I read the promo card. They did indeed split their first two meetings, but virtually everybody who saw the first fight would tell you that Manny Pacquiao has actually beaten Tim Bradley twice. Let's look a little bit sharper this round. Stay low, up and down. Looks to me as though Saddam Ali's right eye might be beginning to swell just a little bit as they come out to begin round seven. Harold Letterman, how do you have it halfway through? Jim, I have it just the way you'd suspect I have it. 57, 57, three rounds each. Yeah, you know, Jim, when something spectacular happens in a round in a close fight like this, you gotta go with the guy that, you know, that, that really hurt the other guy. For example, in round four, Jesse Vargas clearly winning the round, and in the last 15 seconds, Saddam Ali threw a flurry that absolutely hurt Vargas up against the ropes, you know, on the other side of the ring from where we're sitting. I mean, there's no question in my mind that Saddam hurt him in the last 15 seconds of round four. Then, in round five, 
It was just the opposite in round five. Saddam Ali went flying into the ropes. It may have been a slip, but who knows? I mean, I think he may have been flying into the ropes because Jesse hit him with one of those good right hands. In any case, three rounds apiece, 57-57. I can easily see three rounds apiece. It is difficult to determine the direction this fight is going in. Um, Vargas seems to be coming on, but usually when he does, Saddam Ali has an answer. Really good fight. I see Saddam Ali get maybe a little buzz with the right hand as Harold was, was explaining the rounds and the points. And right now, I think it's just settling down to a point where now it comes who won it the most. Because we're in these championship rounds, and I think Vargas is putting the pressure on him, as you said earlier, Max. Or at least in the second half of the fight now. Here's my comment on the scoring. I wouldn't doubt for a second that there are one or two judges who also have 57-57 scorecards, and the rounds might be distributed entirely differently than the way Harold has them. Because yep. these are close rounds, not terribly easy to score. No, nope, like for example, Saddam Ali just landed a big right hand against Vargas, but Vargas had that big right hand up against the ropes earlier in the round. I suppose Vargas is winning the round based on his early success, but... You know, it's not as though Saddam Ali isn't landing his own effective punches, especially over the last 30 seconds or so. Exactly. I think in the last 30 seconds, Saddam Ali has been very assertive with his counter punching, taking advantage of opportunities. And he's taking advantage of opportunities, but it's seeing that both fighters are taking a, a, a advantage of the opportunities because they both landing big bombs here and there. And you know, we're making a round so close to judge. Vargas just got off good left hook but he didn't throw anything behind it through one right hand and you know that's the book on him I mean he throws one here one there one there but once he put those punches together Saddam Ali might be might be in trouble Washington DC armory looks to be pretty full for this particular boxing card tonight last time we were here was about five years ago for the battle between Amir Khan and Lamont Peterson. That was a tough fight to score with a controversial outcome. This may turn out to be exactly the same thing. And here's Tony Thompson, who is fighting tonight in his hometown of Washington, D.C. for the first time ever. He has fought in Turkey twice. He has fought in Germany several times. He's fought in Kyrgyzstan. He's been all over the world. And tonight, he's dancing in Washington, D.C. As you look at the biographical uh, graphics, turn pro at age 28. Turn pro at age 28. Took up boxing at age 27. Wound up fighting Vladimir Klitschko for the real heavyweight championship twice. Knocked out both times. Klitschko's the only man ever to have knocked it out. Record since 2008, nine and five with eight KOs. As you see, nine of those 14 fights in Europe. Tonight, once again, first time ever fighting in his hometown. He's been a road warrior, and he's gonna try to upset the apple cart of the man who is on a hot streak and appears to be headed straight up, Luis Ortiz. In that last round especially, but throughout this fight, Jesse Vargas is exposing Saddam Ali's defense, Bernard, timing him, as Jim mentioned, not always throwing three punches at a time, but with ones and one-twos, timing Saddam Ali and hitting him very cleanly, and Saddam Ali's face shows the evidence on the right side. But Vargas is not taking advantage of the puffy eye that Saddam has on the right-hand side. He's not taking advantage by using a jab and maybe getting into an exchange where he gets the better of that exchange. That is Vargas. CompuBox numbers are just about even through the seven rounds. Both fighters are throwing about 50 punches per round, so they're fighting at pretty much an identical pace. Vargas has just a small edge in the number of punches landed now. But if you think that Saddam Ali has landed more sharply, you could see him as the leader in the fight, or you could see Vargas as the leader in the fight. And Vargas has been exceptionally fortunate with regard to judges' decisions, as he's won several close fights by decision over the course of his last 11 fights. Yeah, he could have easily had a couple losses, but he did get the decisions, and those fights didn't look all that dissimilar to this one. Absolutely. Times. They were close. You know, very often a fighter can function and still go through the, you know, the process of winning and, and trying to win and, and do, the, do the things you need to do to be successful. When, you know, when your eyes puffing up, you know it's a problem there, but you have to look past that. I want, I'm really interested, I'm really interested to see whether Saddam, Saddam can, can really sustain that pressure and still fight through it and still look forward to, to winning the fight under that type of pressure. Hard right hand by Vargas. 
Vargas. Return right hand by Ali. Another right hand by Ali. Give and take fight. And this is what Vargas' corner is talking about when they say Ali is a swag fighter. He lands something big and then he jumps on you and gets most of his good work done, whereas Vargas throughout the round is timing Ali and landing his shots and, and, and piling up his points that way. These are the moments where Saddam Ali does most of his good work. He feels like he may have hurt Vargas a little something, and he gets busy in 30-second clips. And, and you know what? And Vargas doesn't take advantage of that because he only throwing one or two punches in between those combinations back, that Saddam back, is throwing. Back, so back, both guys are not using the best of their abilities when the time comes, and that's why the fights, the rounds are close as they are. Good right hand by Saddam Ali. Counting down the seconds in round eight. But then, I mean, Vargas is not finding him a very hard target. Upstairs. Saddam is getting pop shot with left hooks, right hand. Oh. Hard right hand by Vargas. Knocks Saddam Ali down. And there's the first really significant advantage in the fight for either fighter as Vargas Six. lands a clean, hard Seven. shot. And Saddam Ali is hey. down. Jesse Vargas He's hasn't had a knockout since July of 2011. Yeah. But he just put Saddam Ali on his back. Vargas he has a is right. Happy about it. Vargas has a right to be angry there. Saddam Ali was really in bad trouble, and the ref Everybody, turned to tell Vargas to get back to the neutral corner and gave Saddam Ali at least an extra second push. to get up. And when I Ali rose, he was on bad legs, careless, and then baby. the round was over. And it's the same Jesse Vargas who missed a chance to knock out Tim Bradley you got because of the well, referee's error in me. the Are last fight in Carson. Can you continue? Can you continue? Why? I told you, don't wait for him. You're waiting for that. Yeah, exactly. Be smart, Saddam. Slow him down, tie him up. A right hand straight down the pipe, they call it. And Saddam never seen a punch coming. He's backing away. The same shot that hurt Tim Bradley late in their fight. Yeah, and this is a fight that where he's backing up and he gets hit right there. Vargas dips down and throws an overhand right straight down the pipe. Get out the and now the referee gives down, Ali's man. corner Let's extra go. time to get the stool. Vargas the has ring. a right to be mad about that too because it's, it's Ali's corner that's tardy getting out of the ring. And that was a fascinating session between rounds in Ali's corner because his right eye, as you can see, is almost closed. And now he almost goes down on a left-hand shot stop, from Vargas. Stop, 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 his stop. right eye's almost closed, stop, and during the entire the minute between rounds, right, cut man Danny Milano was on his left shoulder on the other side of the ring and never did any work now, on the right eye. Ali is just loading up on big right hands, hoping to catch Vargas coming in. Ali Saddam right now is not stable on his legs. He's still, he's, a, he's really hurt, and he's just finding his way through. Right now, he has to find a way to get through this round. Vargas, I, I don't care how good your chin is or how light the other guy hits. If a guy can find his opponent that cleanly with, with headshots, eventually he's going to hurt him, and Ali's in bad trouble now. Took by Vargas. Right hand by Vargas. Ali holds stop, on. Stop, stop, takes an uppercut. The referee right now is watching Vargas, I mean, watching Saddam very, very closely. Well, he ought to watch because we believe. And another clean right hand shot. Down goes Ali. Vargas is holding up his arm, signaling, look, I ought to be the winner in the fight by now. This referee, hey, whom we have okay? not seen before, Philip or Kenneth Chevalier from sure? Connecticut, has made two or three significant errors here. I don't think it's going to matter much longer, Jim. Ali's in terrible shape. <laughs> well, if no, Ali learned from the amateurs and learned from being hurt, he must grab, he must buy time. Right now, he's not in condition and or position to even fight back. These shots that are knocking him down now are not Vargas' best shots. He's that hurt. Vargas is looking to throw that right hand. He's lining him up with that right hand. He's either going to come after a jab, two or three, but it's definitely going to come. Vargas has knocked Saddam Ali down two times. Yeah. Referee stopped the and fight. And now Kenneth Chivani is going to stop the fight. And Jesse Vargas has his first knockout since July of 2011, and he is ecstatic as his new trainer, Dewey Cooper, working with him for the first time tonight, picks him up and carries around the ring.
First can't, career loss for Saddam Ali. Can't quibble with the stoppage. I know Saddam Ali is going to complain because at that moment he felt he could continue. But he was taking a lot of unanswered shots. And Vargas is not the kind of puncher who can just put a guy clean away with one shot. There, there were a ton of headshots, clean shots, to a damaged Ali in that round. And that's his father, David Ali, talking to Saddam there. And a very disappointed Saddam Ali, who came in here very confident, 22-0 with 13 knockouts, got clocked in the last two rounds by Jesse Vargas. There were two official knockdowns. There was a moment earlier in that round, Bernard Hopkins, when I believe Ali's glove also touched the canvas. That could have been a third knockdown. Easily could have been a knockdown. The referee didn't see it, Jim. But, you know, Saddam Ali got hit with some big right hands. One right here. Now, here's the moment early in the round when you'll see Vargas touching Ali, not even landing a big shot, just touching him, and there the glove touched the canvas. That should have been called a knockdown. So that was this, at least the second mistake that the referee had made at that point. And now here's the next knockdown. Two looks. The straight right hand off the jab, sitting right there, and I seen it coming, and this was a perfect straight right hand that pissed Saddam out. Here we go again with the punch. You know, Saddam Ali was just waiting in the wing to get hit with that punch. And you know what? Vargas was setting him up. You got to give him credit. He took his time, he was patient, and he threw the punch that got Saddam hurt the first time. And finally, referee Kenneth Chevalier stepped in and stopped the fight. That's a thrilling performance for Jesse Vargas, who has not shown that kind of dynamism in recent fights. Harold Letterman, what do you have? You know, Jim, I can understand the referee missing a few little things, like the glove touching, you know, and maybe uh, he took away Jesse Vargas' advantage once or twice. But let me tell you, Kenny Chevalier is a very experienced referee. I go back a million years with Kenny Chevalier, and that little guy just made a very, very nice stoppage, which certainly, you know, it kept Saddam Ali from really getting hurt, because he was hurt. There's no question he was badly hurt. Kenny Chevalier jumped in and stopped it at the right time. Good for Kenny Chevalier. Well, the I, least surprising yeah. element of the evening is that yeah. you know the referee better than oh, I do, yeah. Harold. I know him very well. He's always done a good job. You, know, you miss a few little things. I can live with that. But as long as he stopped the fight at the right time so nobody got hurt, and he did that perfectly. And now let's go to ring announcer Joe Martinez with the official particulars on the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at the official time. Two minutes, nine seconds, round number nine. We have your winner by TKO victory. He is now the new WBO welterweight champion of the world, the new generation, Jesse Vargas. Two official knockdowns, one that should have been called and wasn't, and ultimately a dominating performance in the last couple of rounds by Jesse Vargas. Final copy box numbers. And Vargas piled up the numbers once he had Saddam Ali hurt. So he winds up landing 41 more punches while throwing 20 more and lands at a significantly higher connect percentage. Jesse Vargas' best performance in recent years yields the end of a long streak without a knockout and stamps him as